The event comes to an end and you exclaim, that was the best show I've ever seen. Hyperbole? Probably, but perhaps it isn't. Millions upon millions of wrestling events have taken place since the dawn of the sport, and it's conceivable that the greatest wrestling card of all time hasn't even taken place yet. You may disagree, however. In your mind, you know that the greatest spectacle of Graps has already come and gone because you saw it with your own eyes. How about we narrow the scope a bit? What's the greatest wrestling event of the past 10 years? Was it something produced by the Lords of Sports Entertainment themselves, WWE? How about something from the catalog of the increasingly popular New Japan. Maybe AEW in its limited existence claims ownership of that honor thanks to something from its currently minuscule selection. Or is there something else out there better than all of the above? We here at Cultaholic, with a little help from our friends, endeavored to answer that question, coming to this conclusion. There was a lot of great wrestling throughout the 2010s. Here's what managed to top the heap. But before we get there, a few honorable mentions. WWE SummerSlam 2013, NXT TakeOver War Games 2, AEW Full Gear, New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 2018, and WWE WrestleMania 26. I'm Adam Pachisi from Cultaholic.com, and these are the 10 best wrestling pay-per-views of the 2010s. Join us! Number 10, Dominion 2018. Was Kenny Omega's IWGP heavyweight title victory over Kazuchika Okada the the greatest match of all time. Dave Meltzer thinks so, and he's not alone in his thoughts. The 65 minute, two out of three falls match had a lot to overcome in terms of expectations, namely the prior matches between the pair. Through nuanced storytelling, off the charts emotion, and the little nuances that make good matches great and great matches legendary, Omega finally accomplished the dream, making all sorts of history in the process. That main event had to follow your typical New Japan card, which by typical we mean fan freaking tastic. The penultimate match saw another Winnipeg base star capturing gold as Chris Jericho fell Tetsuya Naito to win the promotion's Intercontinental title, and that was preceded by Will Ospreay dropping the junior heavyweight belt to Hiromu Takahashi in an equally epic encounter. Throw in the Young Bucks winning the tag team titles from Evil and Sonata in a scintillating sprint, and you're talking a Pantheon-level card. And yet, it's only 10th on this list. What in the hell could be better? Number 9, Wrestle Kingdom 12. For the first time in nearly two decades, Chris Jericho wrestled for a promotion that wasn't WWE, returning to New Japan to battle Kenny Omega for the promotion's US title in a no DQ match. At 47 years of age, Jericho delivered one of his greatest performances ever, combining athletics, theatricality, showmanship, and a little sports entertainment mayhem with Kenny Omega's unique wrestling style to create an altogether original masterpiece that had fans the world over buzzing. New Japan connoisseurs had come to expect this kind of standalone greatness from the annual Wrestle Kingdom cards, and the 2018 event was no exception. Kazushika Okada held off would-be successor Tetsuya Naito in a thrilling heavyweight title finale, Hiroshi Tanahashi downed upstart Jay White to retain IC Gold, and Will Ospreay escaped as junior heavyweight champion following a breathtaking four-way match involving Kushida, Marty Skrull, and Hiromu Takahashi. Throw in Cody vs. Kota Ibushi, and Minoru Suzuki's hair vs. hair never openweight title match with Haruki Goto, and you're talking Walter incredible wrestling at its finest. Number 8, Wrestle Kingdom 10. Lots of love for New Japan and it's not hard to understand why. The event is particularly notable as the swan song for AJ Styles and, for all intents and purposes, longtime star Shinsuke Nakamura. Though the King of Strong Style continued to wrestle in Japan for a month following, the news was that he, Styles, and the Good Brothers were WWE bound in short order. Nakamura's IC title bout here with Styles was just one more classic on his way out, and the pair best match together. Wrestle Kingdom 10 closed out with a genuine five-star classic between heavyweight champion Kazuchika Okada and arch-rival Hiroshi Tanahashi. I know I'm just as shocked as you are. Further proving the card's greatness are the Kushida vs. Kenny Omega junior heavyweight title bout, the match pitting Shibata against Ishii for the never openweight belt, and a junior heavyweight tag title match that reads like a who's who of today's American stars, including the Young Bucks, Fish and O'Reilly, Trent Beretta, and Ricochet. In that sense, this Wrestle Kingdom feels like an NXT takeover. Number 7, Double or Nothing. 
The hype for All Elite Wrestling's first ever card became rather intense. It had been many years since WWE had a true competitor in North America, and with an impressive roster at their disposal, AEW was fixing to make their first shot count. Before a sold-out crowd in Las Vegas and over 100,000 pay-per-view buying customers, the show wasn't quite perfect, but it was perfect enough for what alternative seekers wanted. Even before John Moxley stormed the ring in the epilogue, Double or Nothing was a home run. With Kenny Omega vs Chris Jericho and the Young Bucks vs the Lucha Bros on the card, the safe bets were that one of the two would take home match of the night honours. And while both matches were high quality, it was the Dust Bowl between brothers Cody and Dustin Rhodes that stole the show. A flawless montage of bloodshed, drama, determination and courage. It was the sort of match that reminded fans why they loved pro wrestling in the first place, and along with Moxley's crashing of the party, made certain that AEW would remain a headline fixture going forward. Number 6. Wrestle Kingdom 11 At the time, Kenny Omega vs Kazushka Okada for Okada's IWGP Heavyweight title was lauded as perhaps the greatest match in the history of the business, wowing fans and critics alike across nearly 47 minutes of dramatic and highly intense action. The pair produced sequels that may have topped this apparent platinum standard, but it doesn't diminish Omega's gallant attempt at dethroning peak Okada, throwing everything he could at the wily champion, his undoing perhaps his inability to hit the one-winged angel even once across the match's duration. Okada vs Omega capped off what you might consider a typical Wrestle Kingdom at this point, closing out with four or five all-timers in a row, living up to the event's reputation. In succession, it's Hiromu Takahashi dropping Kushida to capture the junior heavyweight belt, Goto felling Shibata for the never openweight title, and Tetsuya Naito holding off the legendary Hiroshi Tanahashi to retain the IC gold, before Okada Omega proved to be the creme de la creme. It's little wonder why New Japan's grasp around the globe got a little tight in this period. Number 5. Wrestle Kingdom 9 If you're not a fan of New Japan, either you're sick of hearing about Wrestle Kingdom at this point in the video, or your curiosity has been piqued. And many fans were intrigued, as through a partnership with the somewhat forgotten Global Force Wrestling, this event was made available on American and Canadian pay-per-view. With Jim Ross and Matt Stryker on the call, the attempt to Americanize New Japan just enough for a new audience couldn't have had a better show to start a revolution with. An undercard filled with accelerated tag team action gave way to the unexpected parade of magnum opuses at the end of the Golden Mile. AJ Styles and Tetsuya Naito set the stage for a spirited clash between Shinsuke Nakamura and Kota Ibushi for the IC title. Hiroshi Tanahashi and Kazuchika Okada closed out Wrestle Kingdom 9 with just one more legendary battle in their series over the IWGP Heavyweight title, at which point the raves came flooding in. New Japan had been flourishing for some time to this point, but Wrestle Kingdom 9 raised its profile in grander fashion, setting the tone for where the promotion is today. Number 4. All In They said it couldn't be done. Cody Rhodes believed that a non-WWE wrestling outfit could sell 10,000 tickets in North America, and he shared quite a satisfied laugh with the Young Bucks when All In sold out in under 30 minutes. In all, over 11,000 fans and many more through 50,000 pay-per-view buys tuned in on Labor Day weekend 2018 to witness how far pro wrestling ambition had come in its evolution. The event that birthed All Elite Wrestling was, by all accounts, a smash hit. There was classic wrestling with Cody Rhodes and Nick Aldis's beautifully crafted story that was their NWA world title clash, there was daredevilry as the Golden Elite took to the skies with Rey Mysterio, Rey Phoenix and Bandido in a true show stealer, there was even inflated genitalia, which to be fair was kinda polarizing. But man, when you're busting out Kenny Omega vs Pentagon Jr and Kazuchika Okada vs Marty Skrull, you've got your sights set on academia. But most importantly, the entire spectacle was a monument to the idea that there was room once more in the United States for wrestling not labelled WWE. And well, here we are today. Number 3. WrestleMania 30 The agony and ecstasy. WrestleMania 30 was a night of exhilarating highs and a shocking low, though the latter proved historic enough to remain a topic of debate more than five years later. In spite of that, WrestleMania 30 is often considered the greatest mania of the PG era onward, and it's not hard to understand why. It was the first time since peak ruthless aggression that a WrestleMania truly felt like a WrestleMania, both classic and contemporary all at once. The focus was on Daniel Bryan's trek to beat the system, to win the 
WWE Championship many felt belonged to him alone. His victory over Triple H in the pay-per-view opener was masterful wrestling, just as his conquering of Randy Orton and Batista in the finale was Sports Entertainment 101. A psychological John Cena-Bray Wyatt matchup and a fun battle royal had their moments, but they paled to the unthinkable sight of Brock Lesnar ending Undertaker's WrestleMania streak dead away after the 21st step. However you may feel about that decision, WrestleMania 30 is indelibly etched into wrestling lore, a grand spectacle that lived up to its auspicious name. Number 2. Money in the Bank 2011 Had this been a true one-match show, there's a chance we'd have all hailed it just as much. But it's really not a one-match show. Two stellar ladder matches and a heated match for the World Heavyweight title between Christian and Randy Orton already had the 2011 Money in the Bank trending high on the historical register. All WWE had to do was stick the landing to earn maximum acclaim. That is to say, put the right man over at the end. Before the Windy City faithful, local hero CM Punk holding all the cards challenged for John Cena's WWE Championship in as combustible an atmosphere as WWE had seen in many moons. An expertly crafted match between the two was aided by unbearable tension, the idea that a McMahon-led directive would prevent Punk from the victor's spoils. But when Punk found his opening, he seized the opportunity, providing dozens of meme-worthy visuals and writing the happy ending that everybody clamoured for. Money in the Bank was a great show for its in-ring product, but it's a legendary show for the contents, not just the wrestling of its main event. Number 1. NXT TakeOver New Orleans For some, there's bound to be a shocking lack of NXT TakeOvers on this list, but worry not, the best of the bunch gets to sit on the throne. Expectations for NXT Supercards are always high, and yet said expectations are almost always exceeded. Funny thing is, for a while, each ensuing TakeOver was the best one yet, Zong! But since the curtain dropped on TakeOver New Orleans, the measuring stick has become clear. Now, the best one can hope for is the best one since New Orleans. People figured the unsanctioned fight to the near death between Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa would be great, but that great? It was everything you could want in a hate-filled brawl without spilling gallons of blood. The eclectic cast that made up the North American Championship ladder match gelled far better than anyone could have wagered on, delivering a sleeper classic. Add in Alistair Black's exciting title victory over Andrade Cien Almas, and the pressure was on WrestleMania 34 to top that. Most would concur that, good as Mania may have been, TakeOver New Orleans stole the weekend, stole the year, and, according to us, stole the decade as well. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.